So before we get started, I just wanted to mention a few things about the franchise and its musical sound that we sort of uncovered over the process of that first year. Some of those core things were, were that sense of sense of hope and was that was that somehow present in the heart of the music. As well as that sense of heroism. Something in it that that sort of inherently made you want to sit up taller in your in your seat. And those were things that, regardless of what the piece of music was for, whether in-game or a piece of cinematics or what map it was from, sort of listening at a piece of music in its essence, trying to hear if somewhere in it was a sense of hope or heroism could help me figure out if it was, if it was right for the franchise. The challenge was, you know, there's nothing there and you have to make something out of nothing and it has to fit the exact parameters of you know uh, the timing of the scene and to hit it just the right moment and have just the right sound Yeah, we're so lucky that Blizzard is such a collaborative environment. The music team is very much considered integral to our game development. And it's something that I think benefits the game, having a range of compositional voices. And it's something that we've tried to do across all the media types that we have. You know, Overwatch isn't simply a video game. It's a cinematic animated series, it's an eSport, there's a lot of promotional content that goes out there and you'll often find that internally it often gets sprinkled around all of the type of content we create. You know, Overwatch League is based on our core Overwatch themes, our cinematics often pull inspiration from our map music or some of the very original theme exploration that was done well before I even started at Blizzard. Um, I think it goes back to a core idea that when music leaves our department and the public see it, we want it to be as strong as it can possibly be. One of the really exciting things about theme is that that's the place in music where you say something. I think, I think of theme as kind of like a thesis statement where you're trying to create the big idea and everything um, is derivative of that big idea. If you get that right, then everything else writes itself. It was very exciting and uh, a little daunting, uh, but you know, I, just, I remember seeing the artwork and just you know, instantly getting you know, ideas in my head. But ultimately it comes down to, uh, you know, when you're working on a cinematic, like, you know, I had worked on the, the announcement trailer. Sam had written this uh, this beautiful fanfare that Chris Velasco had arranged in, in you know, the intro, as well as the, the moment where you see the, the gauntlet. So you had this, this yeah, you know, very uh, hopeful fanfare already established, but we needed something uh, to be kind of the, the heroic action theme uh, that happens, you know, a couple times in the cinematic, but, you know, the, the climax of that is, is when, you know, the gauntlet, you know, punches Widowmaker. And we ended up calling that, you know, uh, Hero B for, for a while, that eventually became the, uh, the victory theme, the play of the game theme. Uh, and it's something that, you know, I struggled with for quite a bit. I did multiple versions of it and, and it wasn't quite there. And um, you know, the way it always works is, you know, it's obviously the 
the last thing you you come up with. But uh, when it finally clicked and locked into place, uh, there's just something I, I just remember feeling this sense of, you know, that's it, and that's I think that's going to be the one. Something something felt very special, like felt like we were onto something. A real highlight for me was the Bastion Cinematic, and it was not easy. Um, ben Dye and Jeff Chamberlain um, helmed that project, and they were very, very particular about how that felt. And I think that there was a very clear vision in their minds about what that should be. And it was a really interesting thing to see the backstory of a character that's a monster and to find out that there was a, a level of innocence. That there was, uh, you know, that, that Bastion became the way he became because of what he experienced. Before that, he was, uh, he was an innocent. He was, uh, he was naive. He had feelings. And uh, I love um, how that is portrayed through that cinematic. But the process of getting to that was a grueling one. And it was the product of many iterations. And to the credit of, of Ben and Jeff, they just never, ever gave up. They didn't give up. You know, those are hard asks after someone's done something a number of times. You realize what you're asking people and they didn't flinch at all. And nor did they give up on me, which is a really key issue. That's something that is unique to Blizzard. You feel empowered by that you really do get a sense that this is something that is cared deeply about and there's a real vision for it and they just won't settle. The other thing is that one of the important things about being a producer and director is just creating a sense of taste. So, and communicating what that is to those who are going to contribute to this creative process. I think that a personal investment, when you're on a creative team, a personal investment in story and character um, that's everything. And when we're creating, we're trying to get to the essence of whatever that character is. We, we need to know their backstory. We need to know the old cliche in film. What's my motivation? That's a, that's a real thing. And getting a sense of that and, and expressing it authentically with your creative work, that's, that's a, that, that means everything. And I think that's the very reason why people feel what they feel. And if I don't feel it, you won't feel it. Um, but I do have a, a very deep connection to that world. It's as real to me as, as walking outside and seeing the, the tangible world. There's not anything to me that's any less real or tangible about the Overwatch world than when I go out and experience a lot. I remember when I first saw the Dragon short uh, in its rough form, which is a rough animatic and, and wasn't the final animation. Uh, There's temp music and temp dialogue and everything. I remember just feeling this uh, sense of a uh, really emotional connection to it, even in that form. Something about the story, something about just, just uh, the motivation behind it really resonated. Uh, and I still get uh, choked up at the end of it, um, watching it, not because of my, my music, but because of the uh, emotional connection I, I had to it when I was creating the music.
And uh, I think that's a testament to the to the writers and to the you know the game developers and everyone that, that brought that uh, the uh, cinematic to life. And um, to get to be a part of that, and uh, to get to be a part of helping tell these stories and expanding the you know the cinematic universe outside the game uh, is an incredible gift. I'm very grateful. When it came to announcing Overwatch 2 in November 2019, all of us in this room and other composers had contributed so much to finding the right sound for both Zero Hour and the gameplay trailer. And to sit in that room, to have that opportunity to do that, you know, um, it, was, it was amazing. And to feel the energy in the room as you know, we witnessed Overwatch probably at what we've seen the lowest of lows. But then to come back and have all the heroes show up one by one. And the crowd just erupting and the room vibrating as you know their favorite hero showed up in Paris to save the day. Um, it was truly memorable and it it just reminded me how much this franchise resonates with people, how important it is to them, and how much of an honor it is for us to do what we do every day. Allocation music is so interesting and such a unique challenge for Overwatch. As the universe has grown over the years, we've seen so many locations being added to the game. For example, Busan, we will source Korean percussion and Korean woodwinds and use those. And each one presents a new unique challenge. We have a core set of values when it comes to creating this location music. Firstly, we want to honor the location and region that that we're writing the music for if it's based in the real world, which in most cases it is. But we also want to put it through the lens of what would this sound like in Overwatch. This is a futuristic depiction of Earth that we are yet to experience. We haven't familiarized ourselves with it. We don't live there. So how do we blend the two? And that fusion is always super interesting to experiment with. We will not cut corners at all to the extent that in many cases we've actually worked with our regional teams. In the same way that our sound designers go and hire teams who will record Foley sounds, we will do the same for music. And I think that you know, we are very conscious that the fans are very invested in this franchise. They love the game, they love the universe. We have fans that might not even play the game, but are just enamored with the characters and will dress up in cosplay, come to BlizzCon, consume the cinematics like nothing else. And, you know, it's, it's a testament to how much Overwatch has just touched people and how people have resonated with it so deeply over the years. That said, when we are creating the music, or me personally, it's it's all about the content we're making. We're trying to elevate what's already there. We're trying to build upon the foundations of what other departments may have done with a cinematic or a level in the game or a new character. And so long as we serve that purpose, we think that people will resonate with it how we resonate with it internally at Blizzard. You have to have an emotional connection to the work to, to be able to convey a true emotional connection you know, to the viewer.
But on the other side of it, you know, do, do we think about the millions of people that are going to see it, uh, you know, uh, are going to watch the cinematic or are going to play the game or all the people that are going to be at BlizzCon? Do we do we do we let that pressure get to us? Because uh, there's a certain obviously a pressure to make the best thing you can make. And as a creative person, how do you how do you deal with it? How do you sit down and create something knowing how much, uh, you know, how many people will see it, how, how much scrutiny there will be over it, how much, uh, you know, you want it to be the best it can be, but ultimately you have to tune that out and just focus on what's right in front of you and, and focus on the characters and focus on making the best thing you can be. And um, whether or not it's, it's a hit or whether or not, you know, people love it or, or don't love it, you did your best, you gave it your all, and that's all you can really focus on. Yeah, I think the primary function of music is to serve the story that's being told, develop the world, um, create something that helps grow whatever we're making into something much more larger. It can be extremely difficult to kind of to really pour your heart and soul into something and come up with an idea that you, you work so hard at and to present it to somebody else to be judged and to be uh, ultimately have them decide whether or not it works in the project. But one of the best things about Blizzard is that no matter how many times we have to, you know, start from scratch or keep trying, you know, ultimately they're they're after the best possible vision of the product. As long as you know you're 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 after something that is is going to be worth it in the end, it, it gets you up every morning and it, and it it makes it worth all of it. I look back now. I've been you know professional composer for 23 years now. I look back and I just see you know, all these projects that I finished that I don't, I don't, I forget, I guess, that at the time, there were the, these were these giant mountains that I had to climb. But as long as you have something that's uh, driving you to, to get to the other side, whether it's just pure stubbornness, and in, in my case, probably, um, and it keeps you going. Overwatch was so exciting because, you know, we keep hearing this word hopeful. Well, it's really easy to be cool if you're brooding and, and dark but it's really, really hard to be cool when you're when it's hopeful and bright. And Overwatch has managed to do that. 